Well, hello Bethel family. This is our first attempt at putting together a video. Uh, so bear with us. Um, we'll get better at this surely as the weeks go on and the longer we're, we're kind of stuck, if you will. Uh, but I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, of course, keep everyone in your prayers. And and we're just going to keep on keep on keeping on as best we can. All right. So uh, basically what we're going to do um, and our plan is to get this uploaded for tomorrow for Sunday. Um, we're going to do a song, just a little short devotion and then another song. And we'll just close it out in the uh, the point would be to have these about 10 or 15 minutes long, Lord willing. So, um, anyway, that's that's the plan, right? Well, we will adjust going forward. Uh, so, we're going to sing the first song. It's called Cornerstone. I think probably familiar to most of you also. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. song right so um today i'm going to look at it we're going to be looking at a passage from first kings chapter 19 um, before we go any further let's let's pray dear lord as we come to you in prayer father just thank you lord for this opportunity lord to be able to have the technology to be able to just share the word lord with our with our people at bethel when i pray this will be encouragement to them lord i pray that that even more than so than normal, Father, this little devotion, Lord, your word that might seem small will just shine a great light, Lord, into our lives where everything feels still, Lord, everything feels uh, like nothing's moving, Lord, it feels somewhat grim maybe for some folks, Lord, maybe some are depressed a bit, Lord, just from having to sit at home. So, Lord, I pray that this would be a great encouragement to them and, and, uh, and to us also. Yeah, bless your word, Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so in 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, Elijah is just coming off a big victory against the prophets of Baal and also Ahab against King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And bas the, the basics of the story was Elijah kind of challenged the prophets of Baal to, to call down some kind of miracle, if you will, uh, from Baal. Uh, and, and in this case, it was fire. He said, hey, you know, see if your God will listen to you. Um, and we're going to build two altars and, and have your God call down fire upon your altar. Right, so I'm going to let you guys go first. So he lets them go first. There's a, hundreds of them. 
these prophets of Baal. So they get up there by this altar and they're screaming and hollering and praying. And they're trying to get Baal to listen to them to call down fire upon this altar to prove once and for all that Baal <clears throat> was the true God, if you will. So they're up there yelling. An hour goes by, a couple hours goes by, <clears throat> excuse me, and nothing's happening. So they, they think they gotta they gotta up the ante, if you will. They gotta turn it up. So they start cutting themselves and, and making themselves go through pain in order to try to make themselves more passionate, if you will, about their uh, crying out to Baal. And of course, as you know the story, up the sun started to go down, nothing happened. Elijah was somewhat poking fun at him, saying, Hey, maybe Baal's asleep and he can't hear you, you know. And uh, so they gave up, it didn't work. And then Elijah just goes up there, says a little prayer. Uh, the Lord answers his prayer and fire comes down from heaven. And it was just a, a great victory, if you will, uh, in the eyes of, uh, from Elijah's point of view and also in the eyes of Israel at the time. And they saw that, hey, uh, the God of Israel is still the true God. And Elijah had a great victory that day. So the prophets of Baal were then killed. And Jezebel, of course, is extremely angry because all her, all her prophets uh, were killed. So she goes to, Je to Elijah and says, I'm going to kill you, Elijah. Now, put this into perspective. That's all Jezebel says. She says, I'm going to kill you, Elijah. But what transpired before this was Elijah just had this huge victory over the prophets of Baal. Well, then when, when Queen Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you, he gets scared and he takes off. In ver uh, chapter 19, um, verse 1, I'll just start there. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as, one, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, that message from Jezebel, it says he arose and ran for his life. And he went to Beer, Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. He didn't even care about his servants. He got so scared that he just left. He couldn't, he couldn't take it. But he went a day's journey into Judah there, and he, he stayed up. Uh, he stopped under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die, and said, "It is enough now. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's." So this one message from Jezebel uh, just completely shook Elijah's faith. Uh, he didn't want to. He didn't want to do it anymore. He felt he could no longer continue on. And then in verse five it says, "Then as he lay and slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat.'" And then he looked there, and by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose, ate and drank, and he went uh, in that strength of food for forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave uh, and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So the Lord came to Elijah and, and, and you know, just asking a question. Of course, the Lord knows what's going on in Elijah's heart, but he's asking this question. So Elijah would acknowledge, if you will, what was going on in his own heart. So he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why are you holed up in this cave after this great victory? You ran away from Jezebel. What, what in the world are you doing here? And then in verse 10, Elijah said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, uh, the God, uh, God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and tore down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I am, uh, I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. So Elijah's just kind of wallowing, if you will. He said, you know, I've, I've done everything for you, Lord, but look what, look what it's got me. Um, now they're trying to kill me. You know, I didn't get my riches, maybe, or his, his, his uh, chariot with spinner wheels on it, or, or you know, chrome-plated uh, reins for his horses, or, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of paraphrasing a bit. But Elijah, it's almost looking like he wanted something else. He was not satisfied with what the Lord was doing. And then in verse 11, it says, Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. All right, so Elijah, he's going out to stand on the mountain. And he's expecting, you know, many times for us when we're down and depressed, we're expecting this huge explosion, if you will, from the Lord, this huge, uh, great miracle that's just going to blow everybody away to, to pull us out of our are are just downtrodden heart, if you will. And that's kind of what Elijah's looking for. He's looking at the wind that torn to the rocks. He's looking uh, for the earthquake of these great signs from the Lord, and he's not seeing anything. And it says, but after <clears throat> after the earthquake, it says there was a fire, but the Lord was not in that fire. So we've got great wind. We've got earthquakes. The ground is moving. <clears throat> it says, but the Lord was not in any of these things, the earth, the wind, and the fire. 
But then here's the thing that catches Elijah's attention. It says after the fire, right, these big like star, uh, um, these great big um, fireworks, if you will, um, uh, for show. And the, Elijah's looking for the Lord in those places. But it says after the fire, it says a still small voice. And that's what caught Elijah's attention. It says, so it was when Elijah heard it, this still small voice, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Now here's where the Lord kind of gets the ball rolling for Elijah. Uh, you know, Elijah's wallowing, if you will. He he's, he's doesn't want to do anything. He's depressed. Says, then the Lord said to him, go return, on your, uh, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, uh, of Abel, Mahola, um, you shall appoint, anoint as prophet in your place. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth um, that has not kissed him, right, kissed Baal. Uh, so what, what ends up happening here is a lot of times we get in this still place. Elijah doesn't know what to do. He's waiting for the Lord to do something miraculous, and he's not seeing it, right? And all of a sudden what, what he does find out is the Lord talks to him in a still small voice, and then he gives him a big old list of things to do. And it might seem monotonous, you know, go to the wilderness of Damascus, anoint Hazael. That's something that they did quite often, anoint uh, other kings and other prophets and other leaders. Do this, do that, do this. But you know what? Sometimes to get us out of our stillness and to get us out of that place of depression and sadness and, and just kind of being downtrodden, if you will, the Lord will sometimes just talk to us in a sm still small voice and just to get us going. You know, hey, do this, do this little thing, go out and do this. You know, and one thing that I know me and Angela have been doing to kind of get ourselves moving, we've been going out to our property there and planting trees. You know, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it gets us up out of the house. It gets us moving. Um, it keeps us away from people, you know, what they're calling social distancing now is what they're wanting, which is fine. I'm, you know, if that's what, uh, that those are the measures that they advise, you know, to keep this virus from spreading more, that's fine. So we go out there and we plant our trees, but we kind of try to keep ourselves moving. You know, um, uh, one thing we found out that it's hard to keep the house clean. Uh, we forgot how hard it was to keep the house clean, but the kids here all the time. Good night. You know, we've been cleaning the house like crazy. You know, and it still didn't completely get rid of some of that stillness we felt, you know, we just kind of felt empty, if you will, and lacking. But it definitely helps. It definitely helps. So, um, and, and the other thing I'd like to encourage you is don't forget to, you know, look for the Lord and the still small things. We might be watching the news, you know, looking for some new vaccine to come out that's going to miraculously cure everybody. We might be looking to President Trump or anybody in these administrations to, 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 to give us the great answer. But maybe the Lord's point in all this is for us to just sit still for a bit and just listen. Just listen. Wait, what is he going to tell you? It wouldn't surprise me if some of y'all um, got some another calling to some kind of ministry. I remember when Tony uh, was somewhat wrestling, uh, Tony Royster was somewhat wrestling with the Lord about uh, working with the Gideons. And he finally did it, you know. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some of y'all out there sitting at home right now not being able to do anything. And I've got some a couple names in my mind. It'd be interesting if it happened. Uh, but, you know, it might be in this time when the Lord, you know, decides to call you to do something else. You know, for all I know, the Lord's talking to a bunch of people and going to fill up the nursery schedule or, or get more people in the choir or, you know, whatever it could be. But again, my encouragement is to just look look for that still small voice, you know, the, the during this time. You know, the Lord might not be looking to talk to us in a, a great fireworks, if you will, kind of way. But look for that still small voice. All right. So anyway, that's the message that I wanted to give to you today. Um, um, we'll go ahead and sing one more song, and I'll give you just a, another quick update on some of our plans, all right? So the second song we'll sing is called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It's always been uh, one of my favorites. <clears throat>
like I said, we continue, uh, we plan to continue to do these uh, maybe twice a week, once on Sunday, once on Wednesday. Um, I even saw a neat idea on the internet, and I posted it on Facebook, about what if we just set um, some speakers outside. Um, it'd take a little bit of work. We, we could make it happen if we, if we thought it was a good idea. Set some speakers on stands outside. Do we have stands for speakers? Mm -hmm. We got stands for speakers. Um, and just set them up there, like say at the, at, the, at the entrance to the foyer of the church, and then everybody just pulled up in their cars, stayed in their cars with their windows rolled up, and we just turned the speakers up real loud so everybody could hear. Or I guess you could crack your windows. Maybe that would be okay. And um, do a, do a little sermon that way. Y'all could sing from your car. Some of y'all could just put on like a nice shirt, not even have to worry about getting out of your pajama pants because <laughs> nobody would see it, right? So anyway, make make a little bit easier to get dressed. But um, pray about that idea. I think it might be a, might, might be a possibility. You know, we'll talk. Uh, with the deacons and anybody else that wants to give some input.